I've been interested in cryptids uh, for quite some time. Cryptids, of course, they don't necessarily have to be fantastic uh, mythological creatures like, you know, the, you know, the Hydra or something like that, or creatures like Bigfoot or uh, Champ. They can be actual extant species that simply are existing or presumed to exist in an area that supposedly they're not in. For instance, the Tas uh, Tasmanian tiger supposedly is extinct, but there are still sightings of it, uh, and so it is listed usually as a cryptid. Not because it's a fantastic creature so much as they still may be around in opposition to what mainstream biology tells us. Uh, this is about something similar, uh, mountain lions. <clears throat> now, I've told people before, but I've actually, I live in Vermont, I've seen a mountain lion before, here in Vermont. Supposedly they were hunted to extinction many decades ago, and no longer exist here. The official line that the politicians and the game wardens and everyone else tells the public is that they're simply not here. Um, an increasing number of people, however, it's been steadily increasing over time, over the last couple of decades, have seen them. And some of these people are experienced hunters, um, perhaps people who have actually seen, either in captivity or in the wild elsewhere, mountain lions before. They have clearly seen uh, an animal that at least resembles a mountain lion that can't be explained away as, you know, the neighbor's dog or a bobcat. The, uh, let's face it, the average person should be able to tell the difference between a bobcat and a mountain lion. Their size is completely different, their coloration is different, uh, the length of fur is different. There's really no similarity between the two. People often claim, the game wardens and so forth, whenever there's a sighting of a mountain lion up here anywhere in New England, uh, they tend to say, well, it must have been a dog. The profile of a dog doesn't look anything like a mountain lion. A dog has, generally has a more elongated nose. Mountain lions have somewhat, they look like a big cat. Uh, the profile of a cat and a dog aren't nearly the same. I saw a mountain lion up in Burlington area, uh, actual south end of Burlington, up more close, uh, it would have been closer to Shelburne, back in the late 1990s. And it was clearly a mountain lion. Um, I, yes, I was young at the time, so people might discount the, the sighting, but it was clearly a mountain lion. Uh, it was far too large to have been a bobcat or a house, even the largest house cat's nowhere near the size of a mountain lion. Um, it would have been about five feet long, maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> Interestingly, though, this one was jet black. Uh, before someone says, well, it must have been, you know, somebody's dog, it was a black lab or something, you can tell the difference between the profile of a dog and a mountain lion, especially mountain lions, they can go low to the ground and sort of creep along it in a manner that a dog wouldn't or can't do. Uh, dogs tend to walk more upright than, you know, something that's capable of hunching down quite easily. And the tail is the giveaway factor. The tail of a mountain lion also doesn't look anything. It's got a rather ropey tail. Uh, dogs, their tails don't look like that. And it wasn't very far away from me at the time. It would have been, I, I would guess, maybe 40 feet away, which isn't really that far. Uh, you can tell some level of the size of what you're seeing at that distance. If it was a hundred yards away, it'd be a little bit different. But people increasingly are seeing mountain lions up here, and what seems to also be the case, there are uh, a number of people who have claimed that they've sighted these animals, either from car, on foot, whatever, and talked to the game warden and said, well, I saw a mountain lion. And they'll say, well, officially, there are no mountain lions here, but unofficially, yeah, there are. There are. Uh, and they don't tell people outside of, of the state in which it's cited about these things. They don't generally make it into the news because it's hush-hush. The reason it seems to be hush-hush could be twofold. Number one, people who still remember when there were mountain lions who might have been, you know, back then also wolves uh, follow the same thing, and there are, there's a possibility that wolves have already been released up here. Some people are seeing wolves as well. Uh, on the sly, released, that is. Uh, 
maybe just coyotes, maybe actual wolves, there were people who would still remember that era and be afraid of them. Um, of course, part of the reason they went extinct is because they were attacking livestock uh, and got butchered out of existence, or went nearly extinct, as is the supposition of people who actually have seen these, the uh, mountain lions up here in New England. I believe they exist. Um, I would say the population is probably very small, in all likelihood, maybe a few hundred at most scattered across the area. But you've got to understand, this is an extremely rural, especially northern New England, Maine, parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, extremely, extremely rural. You have a small, relatively compact valley town or city, and there might be really nothing there for several miles. Uh, and in between these valleys, you have these large expanses of mountain, <laughs> mountain lion, that's basically unpopulated. You have these large, the Green Mountain National Forest, the White Mountain National Forest. Uh, you've got all of these hiking trail areas that there might be miles and miles of nothing but trees and cliffs uh, with very little foot traffic going through them. It's entirely possible that populations of mountain lions could inhabit these regions and only very rarely do they actually get encountered by humans. Also, you've got to understand, if you take several tens of thousands of mountain lions that would have been here and you kill all but a few, the ones that haven't been killed are probably the ones that are timid and don't go near humans, or the ones that are very fast and sly to begin with, and thus don't get caught. You could have literally changed the gene pool of the population to produce something that, at least behavior, in a behavioral way, uh, is more timid and or more sleight of hand and prefers not to appear in front of anything that resembles a human. And these animals aren't dumb. They're not like ape intelligent, but they're certainly not dumb. They're, everyone who has a house cat understands they're possessed of at least limited reasoning. And I think eventually it will be revealed that yes, there are populations of mountain lions living in New England. Unfortunately, what's likely to be the case is that because, I mean, they're not telling the public that they exist openly, What's going to seal the deal is either one of these mountain lions gets killed, which, which considering the population is probably so small, would be uh, genetically devastating for the recovering population, or a mountain lion kills somebody, a uh, human, or maybe butchers a, a cow or something, and then people will go into an uproar uh, because they'll immediately assume, just like that, oh, well, these beings are dangerous, uh, we've got to, you know, hunt them down, we don't want them in our backyard, it's sort of like what we've done with wolves, there's a great deal of resistance to reintroducing the wolf population back into New England, not because they actually are very aggressive towards humans, uh, reports of attacks, unless it's a sick animal, are extremely rare, uh, no more aggressive, probably less aggressive towards humans than the coyote population, which also doesn't really raise issues and primarily eats trash on the fringes of the cities. Uh, people are terrified of these animals. They're not really dangerous. Um, the sort of timber wolves that would have been around this region wouldn't have been much of a danger to a person unless they were going out at night alone or it was a diseased you know, rabid animal or an animal with some sort of injury that someone stumbles upon and the animal's being aggressive. Same with mountain lions. Yes, there are occasional reports of them attacking people, but even in areas where they're relatively common, uh, you don't see a large number of reports because why the hell is a mountain lion going to go in any area where it's likely to encounter a human? They don't particularly like noise and lights. They prefer to hunt on the sly, uh, jumping down on top of deer from 50 feet up in the trees so that it smashes its neck to pieces just by landing on it. So yes, it's... It can be a frightening idea to think that they're actually here, but in all regards, they probably already live here to begin with. And I have seen one. And I've talked to others who have seen them. And if you go online and you look up uh, mountain lions in Vermont or mountain lions in Maine or mountain lions in New England, you'll see there are thousands and thousands of people who have seen these animals up here. Uh, far too many to discount every story as you saw uh, you saw a bobcat, you saw the neighbor's dog, 
you saw some other sort of uh, animal and didn't real. You saw a house cat. A house cat again does not look anything like a mountain lion. <clears throat> it just doesn't work that way. Um, and of course, the animal I saw was particularly odd because it was black, and of course, black mountain lions, I believe, are far less common. But that's always possible too. Just think if there's a population of jet black mountain lions that don't like people anyway and stay away from them living up in the mountains where no one lives, uh, how hard it would be to actually document their existence. But people are seeing them and there are begrudging members of the, of the forest services and so forth that have said to people on the sort of on the side, yeah, we know they're there, but there's, you know, number one, there are a few of them. Number two, they avoid humans, so it's not really a problem. Just don't tell the tourists, because the tourists will be terrified to come into the woods, just like they're afraid, primarily up here, that if they reintroduce wolves, they'll attack some dairy cows, and it'll scare the tourists away. Which uh, makes no sense, actually. If I was a tourist, I'd probably come up here just to see a bunch of wolves. But there's still resistance to reintroducing them. Uh, which is regrettable. But yes, it is basically the main cryptid of the area, other than the uh, Lake Champlain monster, and you could argue the Pigman of Stowe or something like that. But yes, the, my feeling is they do exist among us. Uh, I think that there are others. And if you happen to live in New England and you happen to have seen anything, leave a comment, because I'm sure there are other people that use YouTube, lots of them, who have seen such animals. Um, Basically, I'm sure they exist. The idea that we hunted every single one out of existence uh, seems a little odd. Uh, it'd be hard to travel up through the mountains. You'd have to form literally like a chain of people every ten yards or so and just go across all of New England to kill every of any uh, type of animal. It just doesn't work.